Well, for a believer uh, who's also a scientist, it, it's an obvious starting point that there can be no clash between true religion and true Islam and science because the source of both is the same, the one God. If God is one and God is truth mm -hmm. and God is beauty, there can be no contradi contradiction. And I suppose I grew up with that basic idea because uh, I loved my uh, subjects at school, including especially mathematics and the sciences, and I also loved learning the Quran at home and mosque. So uh, I, I learned to just have a dialogue in my mind between what I was learning in religion and what I was learning in science. So, so that's the basic idea. If you, I start with that idea that, in principle, in theory, there can be no clash. However, in in practice, there are often obstacles and there are clashes, and it's mainly religious interpretations which go against science or which are unscientific, and because of which many religious people object to science. So, uh, I've met people who objected to the idea that uh, that the Earth goes around the sun, and they insisted. That the, the 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 Quran, the Quranic word says that the uh, sun goes around the earth, sun and moon and stars. Of course, met many people who say, many Muslims who say that uh, evolution, the theory of evolution, is totally against the Quran and that it's blasphemy, um, etc. There are many other examples like that. Uh, one way I deal with this, or there's two ways mainly. One is to remind people that uh, the early great Muslim scholars and scientists, including Bayrouni, Ibn Sina, Ibn Rushd and others, uh, and Ghazali and Ibn Taymiyyah, were very clear that scientific questions can only be settled through scientific means, through the scientific method. In fact, it was the, the Muslim scientists who helped develop the scientific method, Ibn al-Haytham, Hassan Ibn al-Haytham, mm -hmm. and uh, Bayrouni, and, and many others, uh, are, are well known to have developed that, and they helped influence Western philosophers like Bacon and others in terms of the scientific method. So science uh, has a very strong Islamic heritage and questions of science as to the sun, moon, and, and physics, chemistry, biology, astronomy, uh, engineering, whatever it is, these are matters uh, left to the scientists. And there is a scriptural basis for that because in a famous sound hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said uh, to his companions, He said, you know your worldly affairs better. So, so matters relating to the world which is what science deals with, are, are left with science. There's another way of dealing with the objections that people provide. If they say, look, the Quran, the Quran is against uh, a round earth, the earth is flat, they say, based on the Quran, or the, uh, the sun and moon go around the earth and not the other way around, they say, based on the Quran. They say a human being were created directly out of nowhere, uh, and so was the animals, etc. There was no evolution ever. No animal has ever evolved and no human being has evolved, they say based on the Qur'an. What we find is the Qur'an didn't actually say that uh, at all. These are just some interpretations, usually of the fundamentalists now. What we find in history is there were many different interpretations, commentaries written on the Qur'an, with lots of scholars saying different things. And in fact, uh, many of the, the great scientific discoveries uh, were, were done by Muslims, believing Muslims, including elements of evolutionary theory, such as al-Jahiz, uh, who is, uh, there's a whole chapter about Jahiz in Rebecca Stott's recent book, Darwin's Ghosts. He was the first person we know to talk about common descent and common ancestry because he said wolves, foxes and dogs must have had a common ancestor, for example. He also wrote his Kitab al Hayawan, the book of animals, and he was the first to talk about animals adapting to their environment. Ibn Khaldun and many others uh, said these things. So, uh, what I show people, and I did that, uh, what I show people is that Islamic tradition has had many, many voices, mm -hmm. and uh, the way to settle arguments, whether the earth is flat or round, or whether the earth goes around the sun or vice versa, is through science, which is uh, an Islamic heritage. Uh, you, you do the experiments, you come up with a theory, you, you, you test your theories uh, with experiments, with facts, with data, and, and that's the way you settle it. And you don't allow theology or your bias, your prejudice about um, uh, science or the natural world to influence that. The Qur'an especially is about God from beginning to end. It's and about our relationship with God. It's about the sacred. It's about how we as human beings can uh, 
connect with the sacred and live our lives in accordance with our ethics of, of sacredness and our belief in one God um, and the sacredness of, of all of creation. It is not about telling us detailed scientific facts. And if we try to do that with the Qur'an, we are insulting it really and using it in the wrong way. So if, if we're very clear about the difference between scientific matters and questions which are settled through scientific means and through matters of faith and spirituality and how we live in the world, our ethics, which is what we get from revelation and from religion, then uh, it makes things much clearer.